What's up dirty plant hoes and all you dirty plant enthusiasts out there? My name is Rachel and today we are going to talk about all the begonias in my begonia collection. So I figured we'd get right into it today and some of these begonias I do know the names of and some of them I don't. I picked a lot of them up from local nurseries and they're not the best about labeling everything. And some of these plants, I knew once upon a time what they were and I have forgotten and I need to ID them and tag them. But long story short is if you guys happen to know the names of these begonias, please leave it down in the comment section below because I would love to go ahead and get them all labeled, especially because quarantine and it's the, it's the best time to start doing stuff like that. I figured we just kind of get started and as I go we'll move them off the table. This is not all my begonias so it's going to be a little bit longer of a video today. I really hope that you guys like it. If you do like it be sure and hit the like button and subscribe if you're interested in watching stuff like this. So first we're going to talk about my begonia taliensis. And I hope this video is uh, pretty cool today because I'm going to be taking um, some side footage also of all of these plants. This one I've probably eyeballed forever before I ordered it from Mountain Orchids and I just really fell in love with the foliage as soon as I saw it on the website. Now, my foliage does not look a lot like the foliage that I saw on the website, but I also have it under some really intense lighting on my light shelves. So, I don't know. I mean, this could be the light stressed version of what a real, what a different like taliensis might look like. They actually recommend them to be more of a shady area. I might experiment with that more when I get some more shelving. The classification for this begonia in particular is tuberous. The height is six to 12 inches. The spacing they recommend is 15 to 8 and 18 inches apart. US zone 9B and US zone 10A. The sun exposure recommendation is light shade. The bloom color is pale pink and of course I haven't seen any blooms on this guy yet. It is deciduous. Uh, it is herbaceous. The propagation method, methods listed for this plant and I'm not going to have this information for all of them. I wish I did. By dividing rhizomes, tubers, bulbs, including offsets and I'll be showing you guys an offset on this one. They say if you're planting it from seed you need to winter sow in vented containers, cold frame or unheated greenhouses. Seed collecting for the taliensis so you can allow the seed heads to dry on the plants, remove and collect the seeds. Water requirements I can tell you are just like average water needs. Water regularly but do not over water. So that's all I can say about like scientifically about this plant or whatever but I just absolutely love it. Even though it doesn't look exactly like it does on the website, I don't hate it. The fact that it grows from like this hot pink strawberry color into a lime green color on the stem is absolutely gorgeous. I have not overwintered this plant before. I got it during the late stages of our winter, this past winter, so we will see how it goes. And I just, I really, really love that guy. And please forgive the dirt on the table. I, it took me a long time to collect all these begonias and it's gonna take me a long time to put them all up because they were all over the damn place and y'all, my house looks empty without begonias in it. This is my begonia fudoensis. I've got it in this gorgeous green to white faded like little ceramic pot here. Absolutely love it. You can also see that there's a couple of little new baby leaves that come in. When they come in, they're like a really bright pink orange sorbet type of look. Very, very gorgeous and cute. For this plant in particular, there is not a lot of information out there just readily available for me to like speed through this like little tour that we're doing. So we're just gonna use the Steve's Leaves description of the Begonia Fudoensis. It is a new rhizotomaceous species from Vietnam. This makes a large plant. It has small light pink flowers, shade to partial shade, temp 50 to 95 degrees, 18 to 24 inches tall, and allow getting fairly dry between waterings. And I noticed that this guy doesn't like to get too terribly dry or he starts crisping a bit on the edges. Obviously you can see the cupping type of behavior going on here. Probably needs to be in a terrarium. It would probably like it a lot more, but your girl don't have enough space. We're gonna just put them down and we're just gonna keep moving them along like some sort of gigantic begonia train, okay? Hang on. 
So this beautiful little begonia here, I picked up when Cody and I went shopping at Newmeyer's pre-quarantine. It has the most beautiful, dainty little pink flowers on it. I actually picked it up because it reminded me of begonia gray feather. I know it's not, but I really love the angel wing shaped leaves. The intense veination on this plant makes it extra beautiful. It's kind of got a muted green to it, almost like a blue type of sheen, which makes it really extra, you know, appealing to the eye when you're walking around. And I love flowers. And with a lot of things that you grow outdoors or indoors, you don't get the chance to see a lot of flowers in your house. Obviously, no one's growing rose bushes indoors in an intense amount of sun. But with begonias, it's like you don't have to put all the light effort into it, but you still get the amazing reward of these big pink, white, whatever clusters of blooms all around your house. And to me, it's definitely worth it. And I'll tell you one thing, I noticed picking up different begonias from around my house and then bringing them all in here, how colorless everything looks without the begonias out. So if you guys know the actual ID for this plant here, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below and that way we can get some more information on it. Okay, so here is my Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye. Now, I fantasized about this plant for a really, really, really long time before I ever got it. Now, this is another plant. You're gonna hear me say this a lot when I'm talking about my plants. This is a Cody gifted plant. He picked it up for me when we met at um, the nurseries in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I think it's just kind of struggling probably from being in root and whatnot. When it grows like, I think, fresh new leaves in my environment here, they'll probably look a lot better because if you see, uh, I'll probably on the close-up footage that the baby leaves look much better than the pre-existing leaves that were coming out. So. Here's some information about the Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye. Large, dramatic silver spots and matching white flowers are some of the Whitey Eye's best feature. Another feature worth sharing is that the stunning angel wing begonia is suited for basket culture or upright pots and is a vigorous grower. That information was from Logies where they're selling some begonia maculata whitey eyes and I can't really say much else about this plant. It's very new to my collection, probably within the last month, month and a half or so. It's just here and it's chilling and it's new leaves look a lot better than it's shipping leaves, you know, from being trucked around or whatever here and there. So that's that guy. Okay, so this begonia is pretty cool and it actually needs to be watered. So it's uh, just a little bit on the droopy side. It's really, really cute and it has very fuzzy corrugated leaves and it grows with no um, extra light assistance. It actually grows on like a really cool 70s style plant shelf that I have in my plant room and it just is reaching out. Like it's starting to grab me and the kids and Casey when we're all walking past everything. These two offshoots are new. Another little baby offshoot down here. It's definitely one of my favorites. All this crispiness right here is due to underwatering, inattention and things like that, which sucks, but I keep screwing it up and underwatering everything, especially during quarantine. It is a rhizomaceous, begonia. It can get 6 to 12 inches in height. They recommend 9 to 12 inches in spacing. It is hardy zone 10A, 10B, and zone 11. They recommend light shade. The bloom color is white or near white, and I'm not sure if I've ever seen this one bloom before. It blooms all year. It's grown for its foliage, it's herbaceous, and they consider it to be succulent. Propagation methods re recommended for this begonia are by dividing the root ball, by dividing the rhizomes, tubers, corms, or bulbs, including offsets, from leaf cuttings, from herbaceous stem cuttings, and by serpentine layering. And the water requirements are average water needs, water regularly, not over water. So yeah, I think this would probably do really super great outdoors. I've never experimented with it before. Uh, me and Casey are talking a lot about building like a little out, we have a back deck and I've never really put much out there. I'm afraid of the winter and the killing and the putting all that effort and then the dying. 
So we'll be experimenting more in the future with like doing stuff outdoors where it gets cold in the winter. So that is my begonia morocco. These are some propagations that I took off of. I didn't bring the whole plant. They're very tall and I didn't really want to move them. So I brought in some propagations that I took off the tops of those plants. And I just told someone on Instagram that I didn't have this because I completely forgot that's pretty bad that you completely forgot what begonia you have. I said all plants were not created equal, that's for sure. This is just another type of begonia. There are so many begonias that look like this or are similar to this and I'm not sure what this is. So if you think you've got a dead ID on this, go ahead and leave it in the comment section so I can label the mother plant and this new propagation. Not to be redundant or anything, but this little begonia chloristicta, and I'm not gonna give you all the specs on it and everything because I'm going to be doing a terrarium begonia video just like this one, and I'll be taking the begonias out of the terrarium and I'll be giving you some information about all the begonias that I have in my terrariums. And I know I showed you guys this the other day, but it's just so damn cute. It's so damn cute. The teeny, teeny, tiny little pickles on this guy are just amazing. I love it so much. This is my begonia green chlorosticta. These are my little offshoot babies. I'm happily making babies here. I have no way to support these babies, no way to feed these babies, just having them all over the place. So I need to open an Etsy shop and just get it over with. I just need to open a shop. That's the end of that. I'm drowning in plants, you guys. I'm working hard for you guys today. I hope you appreciate it. This is another unidentified begonia that I have around the house. It is one that I picked up from a local nursery. Didn't have a tag, didn't have any information on it. If you guys recognize this perpetrator, leave uh, leave them in the comments below. And I will obviously be looking it up and seeing, sussing it out, seeing if you're right. It's in this really adorable little container. I picked this up in Texas when me and Casey went up and we visited Rubles. Um, little garden shop up there in Texas but which is why I love picking up pots when I go places because it's like my version of like the magnet deal or whatever I know all these pots came from different places and that's really cool lots of my plants be needing pots I need pots so every time I go out which not been a lot lately I pick up pots little in unidentified gorgeous little begonia and this is the baby propagation version I have a much larger plant and it's up high in there in my plant room. Please forgive me. So I went ahead and brought the little baby version so that it would be easier to manage. This is my beefsteak begonia that also was gifted to me by Cody when he gave me the begonia maculata whitei. And I did not realize how much I would love this begonia. It is absolutely gorgeous. The little eyelash looking hairs that come in on a new leaf, which is very like patent leather type of feeling. Like, you know, the old shoes you had to wear in school when you had to get ready for Easter and stuff. So it's a really, really gorgeous, gorgeous begonia. And I cannot wait till it gets much larger. I can tell it's got, you know, it's gonna really spread out if given the space and opportunity. So I definitely feel like this beefsteak begonia is getting slept on. Looks like some sort of rock star's pair of pants before he goes out and, you know, melts everybody's faces off and stuff. It is rhizomaceous. It gets 18 to 24 inches in height. It is zone 9B, 10A, 10B, and 11 hardy. They recommend light shade. Propagation methods for this are dividing the root ball by dividing the rhizomes, tubers, corms, or bulbs, including offsets, from leaf cuttings and from herbaceous stem cuttings. Plant does not set seed. The flowers are sterile or plants will not come true from seed. This plant in particular is attractive to bees, butterflies, and or birds. The flowers are fragrant and the flowers are showy. That is my little begonia beefsteak. This begonia is called Begonia with Lacucci. And if you've been watching my channel for quite some time, you may have noticed that we've had a very fun time with this plant, talking about it, giving updates about it, unboxing it. It's been a really fun time. But on the side note, it's been a, such a freaking joy to grow. This thing has been so not needy. So I really flooded it with light at first because I was like, light, 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 you need lots of light. But it turns out it didn't need a lot of light. So once I picked off all the really shitty leaves from having a little bit too much light 
and really just kind of let it sit in my plant room, do its own thing. I mean, it started putting out these really absolutely gorgeous, little bit sun stressed, even from being in the plant room, leaves. Some more specific information about the begonia with Licucci is it is a trailing and scandent begonia. Its height can be 18 to 24 inches. The sun exposure recommended is light shade to partial to full shade. Uh, the bloom color is white or near white, and I can't remember if this one has uh, bloom for me or not. I think it has because I see some little dried blooms here. It is herbaceous. Um, it's considered succulent and vain. Propagations recommended for this begonia in particular is from herbaceous stem cuttings, from soft wood cuttings, by simple layering or by serpentine layering. This plant does not set seed. The flowers are sterile or the plants will not come true from seed. And it has average water needs. Water regularly do not overwater. I can attest to that, but I even actually probably underwater the sky like I do everything else. And he's still, he's still trucking. I just pick off whatever leaves that make whatever kind of damage I did to it and it just keeps on trucking. This is my Begonia Zumba. I picked it up at a local nursery. I think it was labeled, maybe it wasn't, maybe I'm guessing on the labeling of this Begonia. So if you guys think it looks like something different, I've heard multiple things. This one has been an interesting grow. Um, it didn't do anything forever and ever. I was giving it light on a light shelf. I was doing everything I thought it wanted. It's gotten really kind of like a much more chocolatey than a lime green look. So it's definitely Definitely looking weird. It's still got a weird rhizome on it. It kind of looks like an octopus arm. So a little bit more about the uh, Begonia Rex Zumba. Hardy in zones 10 and 11, they recommend indirect to a low light. The water requirements are recommended to be moderate. I find it to be just like everything else around here. They say Begonia Zumba is beautifully unique plant with large green leaves and dark venation patterns. These work exceptionally well in shady container plantings or low light areas of the home. Begonias like shadier spots. Too much sun will burn their leaves and they recommend here a good peat soil mix that will keep the soil moist. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that you will drown a lot of your begonias if you follow those recommendations, but hey, what the hell do I know? I've only got 50 or 60 of them. No big deal. This beautiful begonia is my begonia taco night that I picked up from Steve's leaves not too long ago. Just slid it into this little succulent pot and called it a day. Beautifully iridescent leaves on the taco night. This has been such a joy to grow. It was my first begonia that I ever picked up from Steve's leaves or anybody else that has the, um, the shift. And I think that I probably would have been collecting begonias at 10 years old if anybody would have shown me a picture of that for five seconds. I would have been like, oh, I've found my new calling. Give me all the blue shifty ones. They look like unicorns. If you're not into that, you're lying to yourself. And I think you should reevaluate what's going on in your life. If you notice here, there's actually a little female flower that has developed on the stem. The, this newer hybrid introduced by Tim Anderson gives us a lot of great things. It has a beautiful dark foliage with a rich red reverse. The plant also flashes blue with a bright light like Begonia pavanina, except pavanina is a blue-green color and this one flashes a royal blue. To top it all off, it is showing to be hardy to zone 7 outdoors. 10 to 12 inches tall, allowing to get fairly dry between watering. So this guy is really, really neat and apparently super duper hardy. So I need to get him up potted at some point so he can really start living his life like he needs to start living his life. These are a couple of propagations off of my Jurassic line silver swirl. I'm pretty sure Rex begonias. We're about to find out because I'm about to tell you more information about it. It's a begonia and tuber hybrid is what it says. The blooming season is early spring. Uh, late spring, summer, autumn, and late summer. Uh, the characteristics are it's low maintenance, drought tolerant, colorful, and attractive for its foliage, and it's shade tolerant. This is what they say about the Jur Jurassic Rex collection. I'm just going to read this to you because it's kind of, the, this is what they think. Jurassics have been selected with excellent vigor, which helps the varieties to fill out a six inch up to larger size container. 
The Vigor also helps the Jurassics to finish faster than most other Rex begonias currently on the market. All have bold patterns and make a perfect addition to any indoor program or shade container program. So since we are on the Jurassic collection of begonias, that is my silver, silver swirl, silver streak. Let's move over to these little turdy birds. And I picked up all of these at my local nursery. So none of these were ordered. These were all like supposed to be like outdoor shade begonias. I grow them all indoors and I absolutely love them. Remember when we will we remember when we go outside? That was fun. So this is my green streak Rex begonia. It's supposed to be mostly green, but mine's been underneath some pretty intense artificial lighting and it is absolutely gorgeous. This hyper metallic pink just like oh it's so intense it's like a highlighter of your dreams it's like every time this begonia turns its head it is catching all the light rays it's so gorgeous so beautiful and it's got all these little bitty tiny baby leaves coming up oh man what a gorgeous girl yeah look from behind from the way she's sitting on her light shelf but i'll just spin her around and she'll start leaning in the other direction tuber hybrid um it blooms all season long it's mounded and upright it is drought tolerant colorful and attractive shade tolerant and low maintenance the water is just like the watering on everything else that i have they're carefree and colorful and that's exactly what i would recommend for the inside or say about the inside. They're talking about outside on this website, but what I'm talking about is inside, carefree and colorful. That's a low maintenance plant. So in the Jurassic collection that I own is this Watermelon Rex Begonia. It's definitely one of my favorites. I got tricked into thinking there for a minute that it might be an Italian Romeo. Look at that swirl. Look at that. Oh, can you guys see it really good? You will obviously when I get really close. But look at that swirl. Holy moly. That is absolutely gorgeous. All grown indoors here. We've got some new leaves coming out right here. They look so cute when they're coming out. They're all fuzzy. Uh, when the leaves get really big, which this one, I know it looks really, um, it looks kind of big, but it's not super big. I, it had leaves that were go going all the way out. And I was like, that's too crazy. You need to calm down. So I cut it down pretty intensely and it immediately started popping out new growth. So that was really exciting. It has more intense green, but it also the pink on the inside of the leaf is more intense as well. It even goes to like a black, deep plum purple on the inside of the leaf. And I highly recommend if you guys are looking into getting like into some beginner begonias, this whole Jurassic Rex collection, these pots are very dry, very light. They haven't been watered in forever. They're so forgiving. Um, obviously not everybody's environment's gonna work, but if you wanna try something, I think this cost me like $2.50 at my local nursery. It's also a tuber hybrid. It blooms all throughout the year. It is upright and mounted, dry, drought tolerant. It's general information is it's bright, cool foliage that can grow in the deepest of shades. They recommend if you're planting them outside to space them out six to 10 inches apart. So now I'm gonna show you guys the last begonia that I have in the Rex collection. This is kind of an example of what can happen with these um, Jurassic Rex begonias. If kind of left unchecked. I haven't really done any kind of maintenance on this girl in a while. You know, they just really spread out. And it's also got some really gorgeous little blooms. This, just like my green streak, which is also very pink, right? This one's called the Jurassic Pink Streak. And this has been such a, such a pleasure to grow. Uh, my Nana came over and she was really impressed with the pink streak. Anyway, so this Begonia pink streak, I would highly recommend also if you're really needing a pop of color in what you're doing on your, in your house, if you're noticing a lot, a lot, a lot of green, you're not seeing any color, I highly recommend the pink streak from the Jurassic, Jurassic Collection. And also, not an expensive plant. You're gonna pick this up for like three bucks at the most, four bucks, five bucks, I don't know, shipping, something like that but they bloom continuously also. Always putting out these gorgeous little baby pink blooms all the time. Love it, love it, love it. I can't see myself ever getting rid of this begonia in my collection. All the information for this begonia is the same as the other Rex's. 
Okay, so this is my Begonia Benango, and I'm not 100% sure if that's the right uh, name for this, but I picked it up also at that local nursery that we had talked about before. They gave me all the begonias at once, and I said, give me them all, I shall take them and take good care of them. Just a gorgeous plant, especially when it grows and it's like a little bit more full around the cane portion, which is what we're going for now. It is a cane begonia. It can be at 18 to 24 inches in height. They recommend spacing it 24 inches apart when planted outdoors. It's hardy in zones 10B and 11. They recommend sun to partial shade. The bloom colors are pink. I have seen this one bloom here at the house. It blooms late spring, midsummer, and late summer. The propagation methods are from herbaceous stem cuttings, from softwood cuttings, and by simple layering. This plant does not set seed. Flowers are sterile or plants will not come true from seed. And the foliage color is pink or rose colored. The water requirements are average. That doesn't mean I wouldn't put it in peat moss or anything crazy like that. And it is suitable for growing in containers or indoors. I ain't interrupting you. I'm filming. Do you need anything important or anything? Nope. nope. Okay. Alright. I'll love you. I'll call you when I'm done. I'm okay. on the back end. Alright. Okay. Love you. Bye. Bye. This begonia is my begonia gunmetal and it was a very small little guy when I first got him from Steve's Leaves a while ago. I think it was last spring. Um, it's definitely got the palmate shaped leaves that I absolutely love when it comes to begonias. I love that palmate shape it's so gorgeous and once i got this plant in particular out from underneath the artificial lights and just gave it plant room light that was very very filtered it really started thriving the dark black coloration on these leaves really started to get rich like it's supposed to be you know it's struggling to get the the water because mama's not been watering everybody it is rhizomaceous. You can get 12 to 18 inches in height as you can see. They recommend outdoor spacing to be 24 to 36 inches apart. They are hardy in zone 9b, 10a, 10b, and 11. They like light shade and partial to full shade. They obviously grow indoors. You can see that I'm doing it here. The bloom color is pale pink. I have not seen my gunmetal bloom thus far, which really sucks. It's grown for its foliage, the fact that it's evergreen, herbaceous, velvet, and fuzzy leaves, and provides a lot of winter interest for your garden, if, especially if you have just a lot of sea of green. The propagation methods for this begonia is by dividing rhizomes, tubers, corms, or bulbs, including offsets, or from herbaceous stem cuttings. This plant does not set seed, flowers are sterile, and the plants will not come true for seed. This plant is attractive to bees, butterflies, and or birds, and the flowers are fragrant. And I've officially blocked myself in. So this is another one from the Jurassic Collection, and it is called Begonia Red Streak. And it has all the same care and requirements and whatnots from the other um, Jurassic Collection. It's got not only like a lilac purple sheen, but also a very deep, red sheen. It's very hard to express what exactly they look like. It's almost space-like, nebula-ish. Very cool. The only thing that I find lacking about this plant is I don't really care for the leaf shape being all spadic and whatnot. Um, I do like the ruffles on the edges and the little lash hairs and things like that. And the color is super vibrant. But I definitely, I definitely like the um, the spiral type of um, details on the other ones a lot more than I like this one, and I probably don't take care of this one as much as I should because of that. It is a part of the Jurassic Collection, and it is a begonia that I own, and that's why I'm showing it to your face right now. Enjoy. This is Begonia Escargo. I actually have a much larger uh, version of this plant, but this is just a little baby that I made. I put the um, a leaf cutting, which it has to be a relatively healthy leaf cutting. You can't just cut off some old ass escargot leaf and put it on soil and pin it down and ex expect it to do anything. It's gotta be a relatively young, vibrant leaf. And I just took it and I pinned it down to the soil right here and it just started popping up and growing, you guys. I did have a leaf, you know, a lid on it. 
and I don't think there was soil at the time. I think I added the soil after the fact. Yeah, you can tell it's spag on the bottom where I started. And then I just threw a little soil on top for moisture retention and a little fertilizer because I didn't have any liquid around the house. So I figured, hey, it might like this. The Begonia Escargot is probably one of the most beautiful while simultaneously being one of the most frustrating plants for begonia collectors and indoor, indoor begonia ladies all across the globe. It's super gorgeous. It has one of the most intense spirals in all of begonia land, but for some reason we all have a really hard time with it. It doesn't seem to want to be in a cloche. It doesn't want to seem to be out of a cloche either. So. If you guys are struggling with your begonia escargots and you do have enough leaves to lay down a little insurance leaf, go ahead and do that. Sometimes when they grow from the leaves that you've propagated, they seem to just do better. It's like they're already acclimated to the environment, not as much, you know, rigmarole involved and they just seem to grow better. She's a real cute cutie. For every bit of humidity that you add, you need to be adding alternative airflow because if not you're just looking at a big swampy swamp ass you don't want swamp ass the last begonia on my begonia collection shit i lied the almost last begonia in my begonia collection is this begonia whimsy that casey actually surprised me with he ordered it off of the logis website knowing at the time that I was really wanting to get the Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye, and I think that's what he thought he was ordering. Plot twist, I like this one, I think, a little bit more. I like the dainty leaves. I like the trailing pattern. Um, the leaves just look a little bit more hardy to my environment in particular, and the silver spotting on this one seems to really catch the light a lot more. The iridescence of the silver spots seems to be a lot more like on fire for this plant in general. I love it in this cute pot. This is another pot that I picked up from Rubles in uh, I think it was Dallas, Texas that we were at. Gorgeous little Instagram worthy pot here. I just have another, it's a cash pot. I've got this pot set in this other pot here. It's a real cutie patootie. Everything's very dry that I'm showing you today, but I'm hoping that once I get all these plants cooked back where they go, I give everybody a good watering. The biggest big fat daddy to wrap up all the begonias in my begonia collection, and I hope that I got them all. I doubt it, I probably left some out because you get crazy when you go looking for one specific type of plant in your house. But this begonia griffin has been super rewarding to grow. It's cane-like. Well, I've got a little stake in over there you can see on the side. I don't even know if you can see that, but this is way too heavy for me and my lower back to handle, so bear with me here. I love it. I've seen it before at greenhouses where it explodes with growth. I'm pretty sure Cody from The Plant Channel also has a gigantic Griffin that he actually gets to bloom. This is a big gorgeous guy. I'm actually debating on whether or not to put him outside this spring. I have never put plants outside that are inside plants ever. These large tropical looking leaves, a variegated silver and green prove just how dramatic foliage plants can be. The average room temperature uh, that it prefers is 55 to 75 degrees. They're best suited. This plant is not in favor of direct sun. This is because the leaves are sensitive to getting scorched in their natural habitat. Most begonias grow under cover. Bright light is best during the winter. So easy on the watering. You know, you don't want for the roots to rot. Fertilizer, I usually fertilize it, you know, very sparingly. I should probably fertilize it more, but you guys can do a better job. I don't notice that it needs a lot of humidity, but I'm sure that you could bump up the humidity and it definitely wouldn't mind. And it's also another one of the plants that I noticed that if I keep water on the leaves too much without proper amount of ventilation that they will get little rotten spots on the leaves. So also keep this one free from being like showered and then not properly air dried. If you propagate this plant, I would suggest taking a whole piece of the stem and like growing it from a node. Thank you so much for coming by and letting me ramble on forever to you about my begonia collection. I hope all you begonia buffs out there enjoyed it. All you horticultural hotties that are all locked down in little boxes right now. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. 
Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe if you are also a dirty plant hoe and you want to be part of this dirty plant hoe gang that we got going on over here. EPH for life, yo. I. Uh, also, you can guys can go over and check out our podcast called The Heart Shaped Leaves After Dark if you're look looking for a little extra listening time. We do long form podcasts. So if you're repotting and you need something to listen to, why don't you put some Southern folks in your ear? Anyways, we will catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out. Later, taters. Bye. Hey. Hey. I just got done. There are plants everywhere, dude. I mean, everywhere. I don't know. I didn't count. I was looking for a purpose. Found out. Money, fortune, fame. It just ain't worth it. It's worthless. I took the cash and burnt it. Didn't want a reputation of chasing what's on the surface.